I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Up, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Maybe you have not done anything wrong, but your life will come. You are there, but we don't know you are there. And the Lord is speaking unto you. Arise and shine. And the correction is coming your way right now. If you are born again, genuinely born again, if you are really serious with the Lord, you can be a blessing to your community and to other people. Take this correction gallantly. And submit yourself. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and then he will lift you all. Number four, there should be garments unspotted with sin. That should be one. Garment unspotted. Number one, the new repentance. Number two, gracious appreciation. Number three, gallant humility. Number four, garment unspotted with sin. Put it on. Put it on. John chapter 8, verse 11. Number five, there should, be, there should be an avoidance of grievous attitude. That is, grievous attitude should be avoided. Grievous attitude. You did something wrong already. You are being corrected. And then you are going and then you are talking as if you are okay. As if you are all right. And instead of you being penitent, being sober, Instead of you behaving like Ahab, after hearing the word of God, as wicked as Ahab was, bowing down his head, walking soberly and gently, and uh, feeling grieved within himself that he has disappointed the Lord, now judgment is coming. Now, you want people to relate and act and behave as if nothing has happened. It doesn't work that way. You are the one that will submit yourself and humble yourself and surrender unto the Lord for chastening. It's part of the correction. Actually, Paul the Apostle, in the book of Corinthians, he said, cast somebody out. And after a while, seeing the person's attitude, behavior, and everything, he said, well, he has learned his lesson. That's what Hebrews was telling us. Chapter 12. He said, bring him back. Bring him back. Does it mean the person can be used again? Yes, of course. Amen? And that is why sometimes, and pay, pay attention, some of us, we are not knowledgeable enough. We act and behave like the elder brother in the book of Luke. When the younger one took all his inheritance from the father and went away and squandered everything, he squandered the grace. He squandered the opportunity. He squandered the privileges. He squandered the servant of the servant, the service of the servants unto him. He squandered everything, and then all of a sudden he came to himself. You know, sometimes it's not that we fall that matters, but the pride that prevents us from coming back. But this man, he came to himself. And he said, I will arise. I will go unto my father. You have offended your father, son, daughter, member, worker. I will arise and go unto my father and say unto my father, not defend myself before my father, not justify myself and my actions and my attitude and behave before my father, not telling my father you are the cause of it. I will arise. You see, the first word, arise, and then shine. I will arise, and then I will go unto my father, and I will say unto my father, Father, I have sinned before God and yourself. And by the way, I am not qualified to be called one of your children. But please, because of mercy, because of God. Allow me to be like one of the servants. Can you see that attitude? 
Can you see what brings the real forgiveness? But you know what I see in our church today? You correct somebody. The way they walk around you, test them. What's the big deal? You tell them something is wrong, the way they respond back to you. When we get to heaven, the prodigal son will stand and condemn any of us. He had no Bible, yet he did the writing. There were no teachers, yet he did the writing. The Holy Spirit had not come, yet from the faraway country he came. He said, I will arise and go to my father. You tell the workers in the church today, you correct them on something. Next time you don't see them, it's when you see me that you talk. If they correct you on your job, do you show that attitude? Do you behave like that? Do you just abandon the job because you are corrected? You think of your mortgage. You think of your wife. You will think of your children. You don't quit like that. You even say, yes, sir. How dare you? Stand up rude to the servants of the Lord. Misbehave. It's after all, this ushering department. That head usher is an anointed man of God. After all, it's just that sister in the choir. How old is she? She, my daughter is older than her. That is the David in Israel. He has the power to invoke the judgment of God, of God upon you. She has the authority. Church, you say, why is the pastor talking like this? Not because anybody did anything. But God is preparing us for a better and a glorious future. Amen? So that we don't slide back. So that in reality, the glory that God has given us in this church, the humility God has given us in this church, the sobriety God has given us in this church, the commitment and the consecration, the dedication God has given us in this church will preserve in Jesus' name. So that we don't become like all other churches. Israel was a nation. You see God saying that they are his beloved. They are his vineyard. God was watching over them. But Israel got to a point that they wanted to be like the other nations. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Now, at other times, you correct somebody here, then they remember there is one uh, uh, church out there. There is one uh, mosque out there. There is one uh, temple out there. Let not the devil deceive you. Stay under the canopy of the Lord. I said under the canopy of the Lord. I said under the canopy of the Lord. Whatsoever we have to go through together, let's go through it together. That at the end of the day, when we breathe our last, that God will make ready his holy angels to usher us unto eternal glory. Then will all our labors be rewarded. Then will all our tears be wiped away. And then we will be joyful unto eternity. You will make it there in Jesus' name. I mentioned genuine repentance, gracious uh, precision, gallant uh, humility, Garment unspotted, grievous attitude to be avoided, grumbling and graceless complaint should be avoided. Some people complain too much. It's an, it's, it's, it's an evidence of carnality. Grumbling and graceless complaint should be avoided. If you see somebody who is always a whiner, always whining around you, run away from them. Because before long, you will begin to you begin to whine. When next, even though your car is outside and the person could tell you at home, thank God in this country there is something they call peephole. And then you had the knock. You don't know whether it is telemarketer or anybody. What I do is I tiptoe. I tiptoe. And then I peep through the peephole 
Once I see it is a face unfamiliar, what do I do? I tiptoe back. Sometimes, because I do it, now I know other people will be tiptoeing like me. Sometimes I don't go, I don't go to the peephole. I go to another window from where I can see if somebody is uh, the person at the door. I carefully lift the blind. I peep. Once I see you're a telemarketer, what do I do? I go back. And if I know you are a whiner, you have a lot of wine that you are selling. You are a complainer, a grumbler. When you come, you don't see the Bible to share. When you come, you don't see anything good in the church. When you come, you don't see anything to appreciate. When you come, you don't see God to glorify. When you come, there is no need to pray about all about Sister A, Sister B, Brother Z. And then I see you coming. Even if you call me on the phone, I will ignore your call. Have I told you here, I, have I told you here that it's not every call you receive? It's not every call you receive. Any call that is going to pollute your mind, any call that by the time you are done, you are worse than before the call came in. Ignore that call. Amen? You know, sometimes some people will call and say, Pastor, I had this about you. I had that but about you. Check up. I don't tell them, tell me, about, tell me more about it. Once you are done, I say, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you for the information. Amen? And you may not know the person you came to talk about, if it is not about church, if it's about me, forget about it. God will take care of me. If all of us would do like that, and then I pick up the phone, the person you said is gossiping about me or saying something, I say, how are you, brother? Oh, yes, sir. God bless you in Jesus' name. And then I pray for you. Amen? Don't tolerate, don't entertain. What's the next one? The next one is generating fruit meat for repentance. Fruit meat for, if you want to arise and shine, there must be fruit meat for repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, this or that. And then there is this word I got, I never, never had it in life. But as I was preparing the message, God gave it to me. It says, Garish, hope of better future. G-A-R-I-S-H. Garish, uh, garish hope of a better future. That is a bright, I won't say garish, a bright hope of a better future. Just know no matter what I'm going through, my future is glorious. Amen? No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to come out of it. I have a better future. Tell your neighbor you have a better future. Hey, tell your neighbor you have a better future. Now tell your neighbor I have a better future. Don't let anybody, whatever they say, whatever they don't say. The Bible says, rejoice not at me, O my enemy. If I fall down, somebody help me here. I will rise. Tell your neighbor, I will rise again. Tell your neighbor, I will rise again. Amen. You know, thank God for this church. Thank God for this church. Thank God for this church and thank God for you. The next thing is gentle spirit in all of its entirety. You must possess a gentle spirit spirit. Uh, well, the, the, the garish hope, I told you, you can write down there, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 8, 18. Proverbs 23, 18, it says, surely there is a future and a hope. Um, that's what that is talking about. So for a tree that is cut down, because when it rains and the sun comes upon it, it will burn again. Amen. Alright, so there should be a gentle spirit in all of its entirety. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. There must be glamorous embrace of all spiritual schedules and services. You see, I'm using everything G, 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 G. Because we are talking about God and godliness. Amen. Amen. Because somebody here is going to be more godly after this service than before you came for the service in Jesus' name. So, let there be glamorous embrace of everything. 
let me help you a little bit. When you are, when you are being corrected, you no, know, I spoke with somebody. I had to talk with this person here, another person in another country yesterday. And by the time we finished, the person said, uh, "Pastor, I feel ashamed of myself." And the person said, "Please, I hope you don't see me as a bad person." I said, "No. Why will I? Why should I?" Amen. Because what we're dealing with is something that has been dealt with and covered by the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And then the person realized for the first time that, time that I was aware of the incident long ago. And the person was surprised. Now, when you are under correction, something will tell you, slack back. That is the devil. Something will tell you, slow down. That is the devil. Something will tell you now you don't have to be there on time. That is the devil. That's why I use that word glamorous. Glamour, joyful, glorious, embrace all the spiritual schedules and services. Because listen to this, people don't understand that when things like that are coming, God is marking your attendance. Prayer meeting, do you come anyhow or you come punctually? Bible study, are you there regularly? Not just that you come, do you come on time too? The church Sunday service or any other meeting, night vigil, how are you with it? And God is marking your attendance, marking your attendance, marking your attendance, marking your attendance. Listen to this. In my own opinion, I think David committed quite a lot of atrocity. But David was a man that knew how to solve his case with God. And God pardoned him. Compare that to another king. And the Bible says, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. You come. It's okay you came. But not with a perfect heart. That king most likely missed heaven. David made heaven. You will make heaven. You will make heaven. As we try to round up that part and a few minutes I'm, we're going to go into the Lord in prayer. Second Peter chapter 5 verse chapter 1 verse 5 2 to 8 says and besides this giving all diligence out to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they will make you that you shall never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and the election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Somebody say amen. Finally, power for dominant possession. I'm going to run through this. Power for dominant possession. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, According as his divine favor, divine power, has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and to virtue. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and say, I said, and if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. The Lord will preserve us in Jesus' name. First Peter 5 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, will make you perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. I thought to say a better amen.
The command to rise and shine is an order from the Almighty God, the covenant keeper. If you will do his will, follow his path, he will bless you beyond your imagination in Jesus' name. Understand that with genuine repentance comes restitution. If you are making uh, if you are repenting, there should be restitution. And with restitution comes relationship. And with relationship with God comes restoration of the blessings of God for your life. Renewal of your life and revival or rejuvenation of your life. Your light has come. I say your light has come. Your light has come. Ezekiel 12, 25 says, For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be delayed. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I see the world and will perform it, says the Lord. In our days, the Lord will be glorified. In our life, the Lord will be honored. He said unto Abraham, Genesis 28, verses 3 and 14, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Verse 14 says, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7 says, This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will be with you. Tell your neighbor, God will keep you. Tell your neighbor, God will preserve you. God will prosper you. God will perfect you in the name of Jesus. He said, they will, this day, from this day, we begin to magnify you. We begin to magnify you because your light will shine. I say your light will shine. I say your light will shine. Don't worry what you are going to or don't worry what is going to you. The Lord has a plan for your life and it will keep you in perfect peace in Jesus' name. Again, Genesis 12, 2 says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10 says, Yet the Israelites will be like the sand of the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. They will be called children of the living God. Christ upon your feet. It's time for you to be blessed. It's time for you to shine. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The power of the Lord is present with you. The, 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 the angels of the Lord are all around you. Yes, 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 yes. Just bless the Lord for his word, for his love, for his grace, for his power, for his mind. Just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Whatever the Lord has dealt with in your life, don't throw it to your brother. Don't throw it to your sister. Don't throw it to your pastor. Don't throw it to your member. The Lord has spoken to all of us. All of us. All of us together. There is something you need to deal with in your life. There is something I need to deal with in my life. I will arise and shine. In whatever way I've been sitting down, held back, held bound, by the yokes of the enemy, by the powers of darkness. Tonight, I am released. Tonight, today, I am loose. Today, I am free in the name of Jesus. Any limitation in your life? Because of procrastination, because of laziness, the Lord is saying, arise. Because of secret sin, the Lord is saying, arise. 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 You will shine. You will shine. You will shine. You are coming out of obscurity. 
You're coming out of failure. You are coming out of oppression. You are coming out of affliction. You are coming out of torment. You will arise. But then, examine yourself, examine your life. As a young lady, as a young mom, as a pastor, as a pew member, examine yourself. How is your faithfulness? How's your commitment? How's your consecration? How's your prayer life? How's your fear for God? If there is anything you need to repent about, if there is anything you need to confess, If there is anything you need to give up, all the grumbling, all the complaining, all the backbiting, destroying people from their back, you won't rise up that way. If you yourself come up to minister, they look at you as a sinner and a backslider, you won't shine that way. Be a blessing. That through you, the families of the earth will be blessed. Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. I pray. My life for sin, my service a blessing. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. You have given up on yourself. The paralyzed man was paralyzed from the womb. The problem has been from your childhood. Rejection. Affliction. Laboring and laboring without result. The paralyzed man was healed. The Lord Jesus is here to heal you today. Your broken spirit will be healed. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray for a set of people today. Please close your eyes. Close your eyes. You know the way I normally begin. So I have to give everybody equal opportunity. And allow people to be free with their God. Are you closing your eyes? And make it a personal business with God yourself. There are things in your life that have been weighing you down spiritually. Yes, people could see you come and you go. You are closer to the temple like the paralyzed man. But inwardly you are not blessed because of things that have happened in the past or because of things you are still doing right now. The Lord wants me to tell you that your light has come. That your past will be forgiven and buried. That the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That you will come alive again. If you are there and you are saying, Lord, here am I. Help me. Raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
You know, spiritually, you are like a dwarf. You know, spiritually, you, you, you are not a giant within. Whatever you have done, raise it up very well. God bless you. Now, those hands that are up, place upon your head. Lay it upon your head. I'm going like, to say lay it upon your heart today. I don't know why, but I feel led to try to lay it upon your head. Your hair will not be bad. Talk to God about the situation. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Oh, now I understand. Now I understand. I understand why the Lord is leading me to tell you to lay it upon your head. The glory come from there. The glory, the glory. The glory of your life is about to shine. It's about to shine, to shine, to shine. Talk to God about it. You know the situation. I don't know. Don't talk, don't come to tell me about it. I don't want to know. But your maker, the one who says your light has come. The one who says the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. All of my sorrow. Talk to him. Ask for mercy. Ask for pardon. Ask for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus. It's a day of forgiveness. It's a day of pardon. It's a day of restoration. God is in his holy temple. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, look down from heaven. In the lives of your sons and your daughters that have indicated this afternoon that they have wronged you one way or the other and they are righting the wrong through repentance. Holy Ghost, look down upon them. Have mercy upon them. Forgive them even as they have requested from you in Jesus' name. Let the darkness looming over their life give way and give room for the light of the Lord to shine forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are there? You are a senior. You are a senior. And you've been coming to this church. And it's like your glory is going down. Instead of you being a blessing. Yes, you're not a cause, but you're not a blessing at the same time. And it's like, my job now is just come, sit down. Be fed and go. And God wants me to tell you. That he called Moses at the age of 80. He used Moses. He gave him the strength of the youth. And the Lord is saying there are seniors here. That God is not done with yet. There are seniors here that the Lord is saying arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. If you're a senior here, please come out. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. You are over 55 years. Come out here. Come out here. Come out here. Come out here. When we pray for anointing, when we pray for unction, when we pray for power, it's not just for the young people. Even a day to your grave, the Lord will still work wonders in your life and through your life. The seniors in this church, yes, you are old, but you are not out. The Lord is saying, arise and shine. The Lord is saying, arise and shine.
The Lord is saying, Arise and shine. Arise and shine. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. You're going to leave this place today. And the spirit of the living God is going to come upon you. That my daughter, my son, I want you in this area be a blessing. I want you in that area be a blessing. And in your own time, you will see the glory of the Lord booming in you in Jesus' name. Your end has not come. Your ministry is not over. Your glory is not buried. You are rising up. I say you are rising up. I say you are rising up. Lay your hand upon yourself as I pray for you. Father, look at your sons and your daughters. I call upon you. Oh Lord, oh God, this morning you minister to me about them. And Father, I'm bringing them out. I do not know what you have in stock for them. I have no job to give to any of them. But Lord, your anointing is present. Your power is available. Lord God, you are saying unto these seniors in this church that as you called Moses in his old age, while all that were preparing for their grave, you were preparing him for ministry. Ah, Lord God, I pray for my mothers and my fathers that are here that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the anointing of God will come upon them, that the power of God will come upon them, that the glory of the Lord will shine upon their life in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I pray right now. How oh God of heaven, oh God of heaven, oh God of heaven, the glory that has been buried, I speak unto you. The glory that has been buried, uh, uh, that makes them to be nobody anymore, that makes them to be not visible anymore, that makes them to be not viable anymore. Holy Ghost, I pray, the glory of your life uh, will show forth uh, and will shine forth in Jesus' name. Wherever they may be, O oh Lord, I pray that the hand of the Lord will be strong upon their life. The power of the Lord will be mighty upon their life. The blessings of the Lord will be multiplied unto them in Jesus' name. Father, when we see our seniors, we'll be happy in the Lord. We will see them ministering unto us. We see them praying unto us. We see them singing unto us. We see them serving side by side with just a younger one in the will and the walk and the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Seniors, we are still praying, but seniors, before you go, you're going to sing this song. If you don't know how to sing, you join the choir today. Anointing, follow me. Anointing, follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost Fall on me, anointing, fall on me, anointing, fall on them, anointing, fall on them. Now the power of Anointing fall on them. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. God bless you. You may go to your seat. Young adults, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. You are young adults. Come out, come out, wherever you may be. From the age of 18 to 35, come out. Arise and shine, says the word of the Lord. 
Arise and shine, says the Spirit of the living God. For thy light is come. For thy light is come. And the glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord, the glory of heaven, the glory of majesty is risen upon you. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Please don't blow the rope. Come over, come over, come over, come over, come over, come over. Yes, 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 yes. Don't blow the rope. More people are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Arise and shine. 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 There are ministers among you. There are ministers of the gospel among you. There are people with the anointing of the Lord, with the unction and the power of the Lord present right here today in this very place. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. There are some of you that are miracle workers, but you are sitting down there as if you are nobody. You are looking back as if you are nobody. And the Lord is saying, arise and shine. Arise and shine. For the light is come. 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 And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord. The enemy wants to take the glory away. Sin wants to take the glory of the uh, uh, away. Satan wants to take that glory away from you. But the God of heaven is saying, I am the Lord God Almighty. I am come because of you. I am here to turn your situation around. I am here to heal your wound. I am here to forgive your iniquity. I am here to turn you around. For the power of the Holy Ghost Fall on The Lord God Almighty The great I am that I am You said before I found thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you came out, I have ordained you and called you. I have anointed you a minister. Father, these young ones are here in this church not by accident, not by coincidence. You have a plan for their life. You have a purpose for their life. But the enemy of their soul has planted another seed that makes them to feel I can do nothing. I will do nothing. I come today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any seed, every seed that is not planted by the Lord, I command be rooted out now in Jesus' name. For the Bible says that an axe is laid upon the root of the tree. And that every tree that my father has not planted shall be rooted out. Oh Lord God, I pray right now. Every tree of defeat. Every tree of spiritual failure. Every tree of despondency. Every tree of laziness. Every tree of, 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 of faithlessness. Every tree of failure, every tree of disappointment, I command in the name of Jesus, every tree of iniquity and trespass, hear the word of the Lord. I command, come out in Jesus' name. Tree of slothfulness, tree of incompetency, tree of idleness, I reject you, dear lives, and I command right now. Be wind out in Jesus' name. I pray that the glory of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord, the unction of the Lord will be upon these young ones in Jesus' name. Father, let the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, 
the power to operate in the realm of the spirit come upon them now in Jesus name spirit of backwardness hear the word of the Lord hear the word of the Lord I curse you now and I cast you out of their lives in Jesus name these ones will arise they will shine your purpose for their lives shall be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Where there are weaknesses in their lives. Father, I pray your strength will take the place in Jesus' name. Cause them to shine. Cause them to glow. Cause them to triumph. Cause them to excel in spiritual things. In material things, in financial things, uh, and every good things of life grant unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you go, you sing that song again. You sing that song again. You sing that song again. Because you are leaving this place today. Remember, remember, Saul met with Prophet Samuel. And after that encounter, as soon as he left Samuel, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. As you live here today, the Spirit of God will come upon you, the power of God will come upon you. You are living here not an ordinary person. Understand, I told you. The Bible says, Arise and shine. For thy light is calm. You will shine. You will glow. You will glow. In the name of Jesus. Anointing. Follow me. Anointing. Follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing. Amen. Amen. What's about the Lord speak unto you? Because remember, I told you. Hearing from God is a privilege. Seeing God more is an opportunity. And seeing God acts is a honor. God will speak unto you. Personally, somebody come and say, you will do this. No, 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 no. The spirit of the Lord himself will come and speak unto you and say, this is my calling for your life. And you will go and be fulfilled in life and ministry in Jesus' name. Put your hands up with the Lord to the Lord as you go back to your seat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Hey, church, I see you people sitting down already. You don't know what, uh, what deliverance is about. Praise the Lord. In your life, personal life, your life has been full of struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. You're trying to pull together, but it's not working out. And the Lord is saying, it's a new day for you. The Lord is saying, there is a new life for you. The Lord is saying, I will do a new thing. I will turn your situation around. No matter where the trouble may be, we'll put everything together. Maybe it's in your marriage. You can't shine because of your marriage. You can't glow because of the man you marry, because of the woman you marry. And the Lord is saying, Turning point. Turning point.
turning point. Maybe because of uh, a superior at work, you cannot move up higher. And the Lord is saying, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Before I pray for you, before we bought this property, ordinarily we will not qualify for it. But who disqualifies when God has qualified? And then there was a vice president of the bank, Bank of America, that was in charge. And he looked at our stores and he said, we are not qualified. That is speaking as a man. Speaking as a man. And then he told our loan officer and they declined the loan. And God said, whatsoever I have done, no man undo. And God moved him, moved him out of the place. And God removed him and brought a, a different person. Today I don't know the person. And brought the person and the new person, the same loan they said they will not get it. Same person approves it. And here we are today. You know why I'm telling you that? I don't care how strong and powerful that individual may be like that vice president of the bank. That says you will not move forward. Hear the word of the Lord. A change is coming. It's either the man let you go or God let him go. Your time has come. The Bible says, and we read it, that you will break through to the left, to the right in the front, at the back, in the north, in the south. Whatsoever it may be. Maybe your own is finance, career, whatsoever it may be, the Lord says, arise and shine. Arise and shine. That means, pay attention, that means you are going to, after this meeting, go and act by faith. Because the Bible says, the glory of the Lord is already risen. God has done his own part. The light is already there in your life. God has done his own part. Your part is now arise. Arise. So you will leave this place and begin to take steps of faith. And those impossibilities in your lifetime, you see them becoming possible in Jesus' name. Those yokes, you see them breaking. Those bands of wickedness, you see them loosening. Those shut doors, you see God opening them before you in Jesus' name. You have any situation of such in your life? Raise up your hand, I want to pray for you. Father, I say thank you. Father, I bless you. Eternal God, I honor and magnify your holy name. Who is like unto thee? O God of Jeshurun, you are the Lord that departed the rest sea. Jordan's kicked like ram before your people. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, for the sake of your people, you subdue kingdoms. Mighty God, by the power of your might, you opened the heavens and sent manna down. From the rock you brought water out. What can you not do? Look at your children. Whose hands are up right now? Father, I come not in my name. Father, I come not by my power. Father, I come not in the name of this church. I come in the one and the holy, holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. At the mention of which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I speak to the life of these ones and I command that anything, everything that has kept them at bay, anything, everything that has kept them low, anything, everything that has held them bound, Anything, everything that has shamed them down, I command, I declare, release now in Jesus' name.
principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in the high places, hear the word of the Lord. Release the people of the Lord now in Jesus' name. Every Pharaoh in their life that said they will not go. I command them, be drowned in the sea in Jesus' name. I speak to your lives, brothers. I speak to your lives, sisters. I speak to your life, children. I speak to your life, parents. Arise and shine in Jesus' name. Abandon projects. Come alive. Be fulfilled. Be completed. Abandon education. Be finished up in Jesus' name. Paralyzed marriage. Be healed in Jesus' name. Infirmity in the body. Hear the word of the Lord. Pack your Lord and go in Jesus' name. Failure in ministry. I command. Be reversed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. The members of the choir are still there. We are done, but start song, just the chorus. Arise and shine, for the light is come. The whole church sing with us. Arise and shine, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord. He is risen. Amen. The glory of the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Sunshine. For the light is gone. For the light is gone. The glory of the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord is come. The glory of the Lord. Now talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody and make that pronouncement. You are listening to our pastor. Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church, Forty, number 4656 Bravo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, I, the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.